Hi everyone, so um, I'm Alyssa and uh, today I'll be talking about how you can catch up on the AI wave because everyone is like AI blockchain, AI blockchain, AI blockchain, so yeah, today is AI. <laughs> so I work with the commercial software engineering team at Microsoft and you know, we built um, epic stuff with uh, you guys. Um, I, the, my biggest mistake today is not wearing this t-shirt because it's literally perfect for this event, but never mind. And like, feel free to tweet me any questions during my talk. Uh, when I'm not working, this is basically what I do, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, you know, first thing about knowing AI, uh, let's look at case one, okay, a single input and a single output. So, you got to know what uh, these variables at each set represent, and this is how you calculate this. And then the second concept you're going to know is like backpropagation as well. And it's about trying to minimize the error function, you know, with respect to the neural network's weights. So this is the expanded uh, formula, and then this is like the totally condensed formula. Okay, so who's following me? Put your hand up. Oh, wow. Really? I'm very impressed. Okay, who's not following me at all? Okay, I have no idea what I'm talking about as well, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. So I think as a developer, I, you know, I, I'm not a mathematician, so whenever I go to those guides online, it's always full of really complicated symbols and I don't really know what's going on. So I'm going to be sharing my journey of how I got started with uh, picking up uh, machine learning. So the journey looked something a bit more like this, I think. Um, yeah, not very smooth, a bit uh, crappy here and there, but you know, don't give up, you'll get there. Okay, so... The first thing you got to know is understanding AI. So everyone, you know, always says, talks about this buzzword, but what does it actually mean? So at its core, it's using machines to perform tasks that mimic, mimic human intelligence. Okay? So actually, AI has been around for years. Um, you know, back when Eliza was created, it's like this rule-based chatbots. Um, in the 90s, and then the first voice recognition is done in 1992, and self-driving cars were started as early as 94. So why is it becoming such a big topic now? And the reason is because of these three. So the first is that we are getting a lot of uh, historical data nowadays. Um, the second is that the cloud is starting to provide tons of compute power. So you can run GPU VMs on the cloud, uh, which are uh, powerful enough to run um, these machine learning algorithms. And the third one is that research teams are making huge advancements in machine learning algorithms. So that's why, you know, AI is becoming such a popular topic right now. Okay, so show of hands, um, it's, okay, you, it's okay, you don't have to like be scared or be afraid you're, you had the wrong answer. So who thinks AI is machine learning? Anyone? Who thinks AI is machine learning? Okay. It's, it's sort of true, but actually, AI and machine learning are uh, slightly different concepts. So AI, I mentioned the definition before, it's sort of a broad thing of a machine mimicking human intelligence. It's really huge. Um, machine learning is an implementation of AI. Uh, machine learning is where you take historical data and use that to make predictions. Um, so yeah, that is, um, so far, I think probably the most effective implementation of AI. And then lastly, uh, we have deep learning. And deep learning is like the neural networks. Um, this is an implementation of machine learning. So you can see this overlap um, between all of them. Yeah, but important to understand this concept. Um, yeah, so uh, actually there's uh, a lot of ways that you can implement AI. Um, I don't really know about the last one, but Actually, if, who thinks if-else statements can be, like a bunch of if-else statements in a chatbot can be considered as AI? Yes, actually correct, it can. So technically a chatbot that is using many, like 10,000 if-else statements is trying to mimic human intelligence. So actually technically it still falls within um, the domain of AI. So yeah, it's maybe not as smart as you thought. Okay. Um, so first things first, understanding uh, what machine learning is, and this is what I'll be mostly touching on. Uh, they, machine learning can actually answer these main types of questions, okay? Uh, the first being classification, so that's um, grouping things. So if I put a Labrador in front of you, the machine has to detect what kind of breed it is, for example. So that's classification. And then anomaly detection, this is like um, taking a line out of a credit card transaction 
and saying, okay, is this transaction weird uh, compared to all the other transactions that are normal? Uh, third one is regression. This usually deals more with numbers. So maybe um, what is the temperature on this day exactly next year? Or what is the stock price of uh, Microsoft going to be tomorrow? Um, so usually with numbers, there's regression. And then four is clustering, so looking at patterns within the data. And lastly, reinforcement learning. So if you heard of that Dota bot that Elon Musk startup built, that's sort of an example of reinforcement learning. So trying to look at what decision they should do next and optimizing that. Okay, so actually I had some questions and um, I was going to give, give GitHub stickers as prizes, but I mean, they're all over the table, so <laughs> never mind. Okay, so can someone tell me what kind of, um, what kind of uh, technique, ML technique is used if you want to predict the price of Bitcoin tomorrow? Out of all of these. Anyone? Yeah, yeah, okay, I think I heard regression, that's correct. Okay, um, so if you want to predict if something is a hot dog or not, <laughs> what, what kind of ML technique is this? Yes, classification, correct. See, not so hard, right? Okay, <laughs> actually it's much harder than that, but never mind. <laughs> um, okay, so the machine learning process, you start with the raw data, and then um, you apply pre-processing to it, so you have to clean your data, if there's missing values inside, you need to scrub it out um, or replace it with something else. Actually, data pre-processing will take about 80% uh, of your time, maybe. It, it's a very lengthy process. And then after you prepare your data, you can then apply a machine learning algorithm to it. And then you sort of go through this train and test model. So you train it using the algorithm, then you evaluate how um, effective your algorithm is. And if it's not that good, then you need to change some hyperparameters or change your model around. And then lastly, of course, you deploy it and you uh, consume the model using your application. Okay. Okay, so let's take some baby steps. Um, this is actually modeled after the journey that I took personally. So um, I started with using the APIs, the cognitive APIs that um, Microsoft offers, Google offers, IBM offers. Um, it's really all out there. And then drag and drop using Azure Machine Learning Studio, and I'll go through this later. And then the third step I went through was doing Kaggle experiments. Uh, show of hands, who knows what Kaggle is? Yeah, don't be afraid. Who knows what Kaggle is? No? Okay, it's like, it's so good for data. I'll show you later. It will change your life. Okay. And then we have the Azure Machine Learning Workbench, which is basically a tool to help you um, operationalize your model. And then lastly, uh, deep learning, which personally I'm still trying to learn because it is not easy. But I'll sort of touch a little bit on it. All right, so let's start with cognitive APIs. Um, you may see those like face recognition APIs, speech to text, text to speech APIs. Um, yeah, those are what cognitive APIs is. And actually, there's nothing wrong with using this. It's actually really good because these large companies have dedicated data science teams to make these first-in-class algorithms that you can just plug and play into your application. Um, so yeah, you're already leveraging their massive computing power and data sets. Uh, and it's really good for learning applications on machine learning and get started in your projects. Uh, so yeah, there's sort of APIs from vision, language, speech, search, knowledge. So computer vision is you know, telling you what's in an image, um, there's emotion recognition, um, there's uh, sentiment analysis, so you can take a line of text and tell whether it's positive or negative. All right, so I'm gonna quickly demo the custom vision service. Um, so this is, if you want to create your own vision, vision classifier. All right, so you can see that um, I have, can everyone see that? Yeah? Okay. Um, okay, I sort of trained this model on a couple of uh, different face products. Um, so yeah, let's test. Actually, you can just upload and then label it. It's them easy. So you can quick test. Um, okay, so let's say I test out this one. This is not the same photo as this, by the way, so. <laughs> okay, so, you know, it's a close to 100% probability of it being perfect clean, which is correct. So let's say I try another one, this one. So yeah, it's showing me 100% uh, probability of it being this, um, this product. So yeah, this is a really quick way for you to get started if you need to use um, image classification in your project. 
Okay, moving on. So yeah, there's tons of different services. Just need to go and check it out. Okay. Um, for this one, I actually did try my best to find an open source equivalent, but I am so sorry, don't throw tomatoes at me. I <laughs> can't find one, but the Kaggle one will have a bit more um, open source to it. Uh, but I found this a really good way of starting, um, starting out with experimenting. Um, let me just uh, demo it. So it's actually a drag and drop tool where you can upload your own data and it has um, custom Okay, so let's say, uh, okay, I go with automobile price data. So then you can sort of, um, you can actually upload your own data sets and you can, you know, view what's the data inside. Um, just as easy as that, no code. Uh, of course, this is for experimentation. Uh, if you want to quickly experiment with data. And then you can do sort of data transformation. So maybe, um, uh, actually, I'll, oops. I'll just go into one that I made already, it's a bit faster. Okay, so um, what I've done is I put in a select columns in data set. Uh, so all you have to do is just drag this block, drop it, and then connect this part to here. Um, I'm just going to delete this because I already did it here. So what I've done is um, I've just you know removed a column that uh, wasn't that good. And how I figured this out was doing a data summary. So another block you can drag in and just quickly look at the characteristics of your data. So normalized losses was dropped out because um, there's a lot of missing values. Um, there's two missing values here. Um, in this column, there's four missing values. So you really got to do this um, summary before you decide whether to drop values and stuff. Um, OK, so this is also part of data processing. And then. Um, once you've done that, you select what features you want to use for prediction. So I have actually selected these features um, based on a filter selection that I did earlier. So I did the filter selection over here. Let me just show you quickly. Um, yeah, so these are the top six features that um, you know, they suggest that I use that are most relevant to my data. Uh, so I've used those six features. And then I split the data, 75% um, of data goes into training, 25% goes into scoring the model. And then uh, lastly, I evaluate the results of my um, model. Um, so yeah, um, that's a really quick way to get started with understanding. And there's a lot of things you can do with the tool, I just didn't go through it. All right, so let's move on to Kaggle, maybe a bit more exciting. Okay, so Kaggle is a website um, that has, it's, it's a community actually, and people there download data sets and they experiment with it, and then they post their experiments online. Um, so they do these experiments in something called Jupyter Notebooks, and you can even participate in challenge or tag team uh, with someone else and participate in a data science challenge. Um, okay, so let me just quickly show you Kaggle. Um, Kaggle is once you've understood the concepts behind machine learning, you can actually use this. So, um, okay, I already have some. Okay. Yeah, Kaggle is actually bought by Google now, but it's still an awesome tool. So, <laughs> um, okay, so you can see, oh, if I go to data sets, um, oh, look, what's the top one? Uh, yeah, you can see a bunch of um, different data sets that you can use. It's super awesome. Um, you can search by top votes. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Okay, so this is a movie data set. Let's say you want to use this. All you have to do is go into data, and uh, you can download the CSVs here for, uh, to use it in your own projects. Um, my computer has frozen. And if you click inside kernels, there's actually a bunch of uh, projects and experiments that people have uploaded. So you can go into, say, um, film recommendation engine. And this is actually a Jupyter notebook that someone has posted. It explains what techniques they are using, uh, how they have done the documentation, sorry, how they have done um, the EDA process, sorry, exploratory data analysis. So yeah, you can actually follow this and create all of these. 
Um, let's go through an easier one. Um, okay, it's called Emma from Scratch with Iris. So we'll fork this notebook. So if you're getting started with Kaggle, this is what you can do, actually. Uh, so you start with fork the notebook, and then um, it will open this workspace for you. Uh, it's just starting the Jupyter notebook. <coughs> All right. So your kernel is now running in the cloud. Um, and let's say you want to edit something in here, okay? So to run it, you can just, you know, run it in the notebook itself. You can load the data set. So I'm actually running this. And then you can show the first two rows on the data set. Um, so obviously you can change this. So if I say like print hello world, then yeah, it can print it as well. So uh, this is just a really easy way to get started. And if you want to run this in your own laptop instead of Kaggle, you can just download the download this uh, IPy NB file. It's a Jupyter notebook. Um, okay, so I actually made one here. You just open the command prompt and then you run Jupyter notebook. And this will actually run it locally. Uh, has anyone here used Jupyter Notebooks before? Okay, yeah, a couple of you. Uh, cool. So it's a great tool. I, I love it. Um, so yeah, and now it's running locally. Um, okay, it's showing errors, but I mean, you can just do a <laughs> hex. Okay, yeah. And then you just run it the same way, shift enter, etc. Uh, please create a virtual environment. Uh, I, I have no time to explain what a virtual environment is, but just go and look it up and <laughs> create one before you anyhow install packages. Huh? Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, going back to my slides. Okay, so the next thing I want to go through is um, the Azure Machine Learning Workbench. So this is actually a tool for you to... Um, you can import your data sources, and if you don't want to deal with it from code level, you can actually um, do data preparation straight in here. So I've loaded in the data source, and then if I, um, let's say I want to change this to uh, flower species, then I can actually just do that and it will rename. I can even go in and say remove column or um, look at column statistics. So it will give me some really quick uh, functions that I can use to you know, ev evaluate what is happening. I can do replace missing values and replace it with something. Yeah, so uh, you can also look at the notebook from in here. Or of course, run it locally yourself. Um, same, same concept as before. And then, of course, you can, run, um, you can run models. So the good thing about this is you can actually create uh, your own VM. So let's say you want to run your code on the cloud. Uh, you can just create your own VM, uh, maybe a GPU-based one, and then you can create a um, target. So if I click Docker Python and click Run, it will actually run it inside a VM that's running in the cloud. But let's say I just want to run it locally right now. Then I can just click Run, and it will submit the job. Uh, so one of the good things about this also is that you can see your run histories. Uh, this is really useful when you're doing data science because you have to compare, you have to compare the differences in the runs. Um, so for example, if I change something in 11, I want the ability to be able to go back to uh, 10 and see why, see why this was better. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So, um, of course, this is the thing that everyone is always interested in <laughs> uh, doing deep learning. So, I don't think I have t uh, enough time to explain um, the entire process of deep learning. But basically, you have an input node, you have an output node, depending on the number of um, outputs you want to have, and then the hidden layers, you can configure them. So in essence, the neural net, the nodes in the hidden layers are going to adjust, um, adjust its weights yeah, to get the best output and minimize the error. 
Um, if you are a beginner at neural networks, I highly recommend you use Keras with either TensorFlow or CNTK in the back end. The uh, reason I recommend this is uh, Keras is like a super high level API for building neural networks and it is just like the easiest thing to get started with. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you have too much expectations with uh, neural nets. They can be quite difficult to um, uh, optimize and configure, especially the parameters, there's tons of them. So you will most likely be dis disappointed initially. And remember that they aren't always the best for your use case. So I think they're great for things like images, NLP, uh, audio, yeah. Um, the good thing about neural networks is that they automatically uh, learn the features. So you can skip a lot of uh, time with the feature engineering. Yeah, that's one of the advanta main advantages of using neural networks. Uh, so to learn how to use neural networks, again, I suggest going to Kaggle. Kaggle is like your best friend. Um, OK, so I found a small snippet here. Uh, so this is how Keras works. You just define, define the layers that you want. So it has 46, um, 46 input nodes because over here there's actually, <coughs> yeah, 46. And then uh, after that you add another layer in the middle and finally you add an output layer. So I think there's only one node because there's one thing they want to predict. And then what you do is you just go model.fit over here. So this is very basic. Um, you, have, you probably have to do a lot of trial and error to get the best um, result that you want. And then you can see that, yeah, these are the epochs. Uh, so yeah, just look on the Kaggle, search for some uh, neural network examples, and then just run through them. Cool. OK, so who currently feels like this? It's OK. It's been a long night. And I just ran through neural networks, so yeah, understandable. Um, don't worry, just. Um, as long as you learn something from what I said, like even one thing, I'll be happy. <laughs> okay, so final thoughts. Uh, in my opinion, you don't really need to know like super complicated math. Uh, knowledge of statistics is very useful, but uh, you don't really need to understand like super duper complex maths to get started with um, you know AI. Uh, it's not magic, to be honest. I don't know if any of you guys know the garbage in, garbage out rule. If you have garbage data in, you're going to have uh, garbage output. So uh, the quality of your data is super important. Uh, data prep will take most of your time, so don't worry if you get frustrated with that part. Um, you spend a lot of time on that, you get better results. Um, one way to you know, persevere with it is to find a project that you are personally invested in. So I think at one point I wanted, oh yeah, I'm still trying to clone myself using uh, Recurrent neural network. Yeah, it's not going so well. It's like, it's like outputting the 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 uh, 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 the. So <laughs> I think I need to improve that. <laughs> you should find a buddy. I think that's a very good way. Find someone who's interested in the same thing as you, and then make sure both of you are accountable uh, when in a certain part of the week. Yeah, and of course perseverance is key. Um, if you don't persevere and do nothing, the worst thing you can do is nothing, basically. So yeah. Just try to get started. OK, thanks very much for listening. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much, Alyssa. <laughs>